Cornick from Paint and Porcelain and Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And I have with me my special guest, who's also my daughter, and this is Christina Cardinal, and she's from The Turn Leg. And um, she's uh, been in business for a while and do, has a booth at, at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall. And she lent me a little bit of space in that booth. So the other day we were doing a, uh, uh, an online, you know, I was demonstrating, and uh, it came, a lot of questions came up about how do I display my stuff? I have a booth. What's the best way to make sure that people see it? Um, we also talked a little bit about um, I've got a show and a sale coming up, and, and how do I display stuff? And I thought, well, who better to do that than my daughter because she has had uh, a lot of experience. She started at Plaza Antiques in 2015, and she's been uh, gradually growing her business. She's now up to, what, 1,300 square feet? Mm -hmm. Yep, 1,300 square feet, which is a lot when she started with a 10 by 10 booth, so that's uh, considerable. And she let me have this space in there, and I have a little, if you haven't seen it, I have a little display case. She's built me a wall so I can put up some of my um, pictures and bigger pieces, and then I also have like louvers that I can hang things on very easily, like the ornaments. So I'm going to turn it over to her. Uh, she has a lot of great tips and suggestions. Okay, okay. Christy? Hi, I'm Christina from The Turned Leg. And um, I am not a porcelain artist like my mom. I sell antiques and vintage and I sell paint and product. And um, as my mom mentioned, I'm in a booth. But what we're going to talk about here today is we're going to talk about display tips. So uh, I know this is now also streaming live on my business page, The Turned Leg. And we're going to talk about if you are a booth owner, if you do craft setups, if you have just a table we're talking about. I know many of you are watching on Paint and Porcelain are porcelain artists and maybe you do shows. Maybe you're in a booth space, maybe you're in some sort of a display case somewhere. We're going to talk about how to get sales, how to make things pretty. I'm just going to share tips and tricks that have worked for me. Um, so I've been a booth owner since 2015. I started off with an 8 by 10 square foot space. I now have 1,300 square feet. And um, I also want to mention that I have a YouTube channel, The Turned Leg. Uh, I'll put it in the feed that also I have a ton of videos that you can watch about display and owning a booth. Once again, if you're a porcelain artist and you're like, well, wait a minute, Christina, this won't necessarily pertain to me. It might because I talk about social media, display and setting it up and it really can be applied to anyone. Um, so I hope you find this helpful. I also want to tell you too, that if you like this, I also have a booth owners business group. It is a private group. It is a paid group on Facebook, but this information here today is totally free. It's just kind of showing you what I share too in my private group. I will put the link to the private Facebook business group too in the feed if you want to check it out for some more information. So um, I want to just jump in because we want to talk display, whether you're doing just a setup for a craft fair or you're in a booth, Display is really important. It's going to lead to getting the customers to look at your stuff and that's going to lead to sales. And that's what you want. You can make all of the prettiest things in the world, but you want someone to buy it and treasure it and own it. So here's what you need to do. First thing I want to tell you is if you're not familiar with Pinterest, it is a great resource for you. I am constantly using it. Of course, you can use it for inspiration. You can find recipes on it. You can do all the things. It is a site where people are pinning or saving stuff. It's like a gigantic um, kind of memo board where they pin all their cool things they love and you can find them and search them. It's a searchable database. One of the things I use Pinterest for is I use it for inspiration, but I also use Pinterest for display ideas. So I also have some specific Pinterest pages in here, um, boards on my page about things we're going to talk about today. But if you haven't checked out Pinterest, go to Pinterest.com. And the first thing is just kind of finding out your style. Um, sure, you can set up your craft booth and you can just put like a, you know, a pretty tablecloth on and line everything up. But I'm sure if you've been to any craft fairs or shows, 
just looking, some of the displays are better than others. I should have told you, you like might want a pen and paper for this or watch it on the replay because we're going to give you a lot of, I'm going to give you a lot of information and I don't want to overwhelm you, but I want this to be worthwhile to many of you. Um, so display is important. You can get inspired on Pinterest. You can look up display ideas. And even if it's not in your area, like I do a lot of antiques, okay? And I, I do craft them. items and things like that. But sometimes I'll get inspiration for a display from like a clothing store display. So you can search in Pinterest just under like retail display, which some of you are like, wait a minute, Christina, I do a craft show. Wouldn't I want craft? Sure, you can search that. But please kind of think outside of the box on Pinterest. And one thing I recommend you do is start your own Pinterest page. It's free. You don't have to worry. It's an easy thing to do. Create your own display board and then just start pinning things you like. Even if it is like a clothing display setup or something, you're like, hey, I like how they did that. That looks cool. That's my puppy George, by the way. He thinks because normally when I go live, my mom gives him treats and keeps him company. So right now he doesn't understand why she's here and she's not paying any attention to George. I'm not feeding him or anything. So, so, here. so that's George you're hearing in the background. Um, he's very spoiled. So I recommend for everyone, my first tip to all of you is make a Pinterest board if you've not already done so. If you have one, great, but start looking at display pages. And then I have a board called display that you can check out and, and just pin what you like. And then once you've pinned a whole bunch of stuff, go back and see, hmm, is there a theme? Is there, you know, am I really into like a natural vibe? Do I like maybe wood in the background or do I like a certain color? You're going to figure yeah. out your style from that and that's going to help you move forward because your space, whether it's at a craft uh, booth or if it's in a vendor mall, like an antique mall or something, you want it to show you and your style. And of course, if you are from paint and porcelain and you have items that are hand painted, if you pick something that you love, all of your painted items are also going to really pop and look absolutely fabulous. So please use Pinterest if you have questions about it too. Uh, please reach out to us. So I hope that's helped you guys with tip number one. Tip number two, we're going to talk about display specifically. Because you can, do you guys see behind me right now, like all these paints and products, they're just lined up pretty much, right? They're there because they're convenient and I can find what I'm looking for. If you have a booth or you have your table that is all set up and you just line everything up, sure it's there, but it's not going to be as visually interesting to people as you could make it. And so there's a few little tips and there's one thing in display that's often referred to as the display pyramid. And if you've never heard of it before, it's literally that simple, is think of triangles on your table or in your craft booth. And the key is this, on your table or even in certain areas. Now, if you have an entire booth, you can do the pyramid in different spots throughout. Think of a triangle. Think of different levels, raising things up using things. I also, if you remember from last year, I don't know if you saw, but I also have on YouTube last year's um, video that talks about displays. I had one that was in the form of a pyramid. In fact, two of them. Um, and you, you should look for those when you're out, like if you resale or you garage sale or tag sale, um, look for things that you can paint. And like with us, it's a black just you know black sheet that we use on the tables or a black table covering and I painted I painted those displays black so that I it all goes together and then I just put my pieces on this pyramid display and it's really nice for small pieces too absolutely and there's something really easy that's been done a lot of times too there are um they're like risers, those plastic risers. You can even find them at thrift stores. Sometimes people use them like to organize their kitchens, you know, to put the spices on, those step things. Those can work really well to give you some height to your pieces. You can use under your, if we're just talking about porcelain painters, you know, you have the tablecloth my mom was talking about. Underneath, you could put boxes. 
and pretty much shoe boxes or things that are sturdy enough to support your porcelain or anything that you're selling at your craft booth or just to give it different height and interest. The point of the pyramid is this. Oh, one more thing. I do want to tell you that wooden crates are great. They're sturdy, they're stackable, you can put them up and down, you can put them horizontal, you can put them vertical. They can give you lots of height too, and you can get all these ideas too on Pinterest. Definitely check that out, but the whole point of the pyramid display, I would say if you're doing a table, you would want one main pyramid for your display. So you're gonna want a super high point, and then you're gonna wanna level things out at different heights as you go. And it literally is that simple. You have to play around with it so that you get it the way you want. Now, if you're not in porcelain art, if you're in furniture like me, I like to have different sized things. And I think even as a porcelain artist, different sized items in your pyramid display are gonna help. Now for me, it might be furniture. So I have my big base piece and I'm gonna have little things higher up. For you, you could do the same thing. If you have a very large painted box or something, that's probably gonna be near the bottom of the pyramid. And at the top, you might have like a teapot all the way up at the top. So you have to kind of think about it. Why do you want to do this, Christina? This is such a waste and it's going to make my table unsta unsteady and all of this. It's totally worth it. One, make sure everything you're using is going to be sturdy. Make sure your table is sturdy. But having a pyramid display is going to lead the eye. If you just look at some of the pictures that were pinned there from Pinterest under pyramid display, you will watch your eye go through the whole display because you're looking at all of the different heights. Instead of someone just looking at your table where it's all lined up, you're like one and done. Like if you're looking here, you're like, yep. If I have things that are in more of a display, your eye will travel throughout. That's going to lead to more sales and more shoppers looking at your items. And people will start at eye level to look at things too. So it's important to have risers of any sort so you can bring your china up or if you have a large piece you don't need a very big riser to bring it up to eye level for people absolutely and if you're in a booth space eye level is prime real estate but what's really important and it's something people don't always think about because it's a little bit more work as a booth owner is you also have above and below that can sell so those of you that are in a booth setting don't forget to put items in all of those spaces. In fact, one of the most helpful tips for you, especially if you're in a booth or you're setting up for a craft show, is once you have it all set up, take your camera, take a video, take lots of pictures, take it all at eye level, and then take one above eye level, the video, and below. Look for gaps, because sometimes while you're doing it or you're in your booth space, you're not gonna really, you see it too much. You get used yeah. to it. You don't see the problems or gaps. It's funny with my mom's face. Some of the things we realized were like a problem. Like, wow, that's like totally dead space there. We didn't realize it until we posted a video. You know, she did a live and she was like, did you see all that open space at the top? I gotta do, yes. And don't forget to do your lives and take pictures because you can use that later on if you have a, a website or even if you have a Facebook page you can put those pictures on there and you can put them on after the show, you can put them on before the show, but at least you'll have pictures of your work. Take pictures of individual things and grouping. If you are like totally unclear, like wait a minute, I don't get the social media thing, I just watch people on Facebook but I don't know where else to go. Um, you might want to check out, like I said, I do have a business group that you can join. And every month we have different topics. We talk a ton about social media and how to get started and picture taking and tips and tricks. So if that's something you're interested, there's also free resources you can check out on YouTube, on my page. I have an entire playlist for booth owners. And don't think like, well, I'm a porcelain artist, so I'm not really sure it's gonna, it will. No matter what you sell, in a booth or a craft space, all of these tips and tricks can help any small business owner that is trying to sell something to customers. Look at this display here, okay? What's behind me? This is an old door, okay, that I got out of the trash. I'm sorry if I offend you, but it was free. So this is what I'm using for just my background. I'm trying to salvage and repurpose. 
This was the top of a hutch on top of another piece that I just kind of put together. You use what works. I have excellent suggestions of things you can use too. You know, like the crate idea. My mom, if you guys haven't seen her space, we used um, an old shutter. Now it's not really a shutter. It's a louver. It's those closet doors, you know, With that you slats. shut that look like shutters. Those are serious gold for display. In fact, many craft booth owners will put two of them because they come in twos usually because when you close them on your closet, you guys know what I'm talking about, hopefully. They have the slats on them. They're normally two hooked together and you can put them in like a V formation. You can put shelves or you can stand them up the opposite way like that, but the slats allow you to hang stuff on them. And if you're doing a craft show, um, you can take those and either put them behind you mm -hmm. or on the side of the booth. Bifold, thank and, you. And that will help a lot as far as drawing the eye up as, and drawing people down to your table because it will look different than the other table. And they are the best. What do I hang with? Like S-hooks of some sort. Or if they're ornaments you're hanging, your ornament hooks will work too. Mm -hmm. But you can hang... I, pictures. Even if, you paint, if you're painting plates and you have the plate hangers, you can put those on. You can paint, put the tiles up. All of the things. I'm trying to apply it to the porcelain artist so you can see the value. And no, Go ahead. And don't forget, porcelain artists, that you can paint a tile or a plate and put it in a frame and then put hang it up there and people will instantly realize they can hang that on a wall. If you have it laying uh, in a holder on your table or laying flat on your table, they, they don't make the connection that that could perhaps be on the wall in their home. If you're using the bifold doors and you're making them portable too, you can put a chain between the parts that open, so they only open so far, right. so you don't worry, and you can still then fold them closed to take them with you. So you don't have to worry about, is it going to fall over? There's lots of ways to make things sturdy, but you got to kind of think outside the box. You can also use... For those of you who just have a tabletop display and you're like, well, they only give me a table. They don't give me space behind or in front. You can get shutters, like those shutters over your windows. Those also bifold. And you can do the same thing. And you can put that on your table. The more interest you can add and the more you think about pyramid design, the more natural it's going to be. And seriously, try it out. Uh, I would assume if you're going to craft shows, you set up ahead of time and practice. Um, if you're in a booth or a setting like that, you can set it up, take a picture. If you don't like something or you want to look at it when you get home, you can fix it. You're going to tweak things. It's not going to come easy initially, but the more you do it, the more you will see it. You can also hang your uh, business card holder on those doors, mm -hmm. get it off the table, and put it at eye level. Yeah, this is George. We're going for the cute puppy. He, he keeps popping his head up because he's been sleeping in my lap most of the time. Yeah. And by the way, if you're a porcelain artist and you feel like you're not, um, if you're if you're a porcelain artist, you feel like you're not getting a um, a lot of workshops on paint and porcelain. You're not. Most of them are on paint and porcelain exchange. And what you do need to do is go to that page on Facebook and just sign up and make sure you answer the question. Uh, regarding agreeing to the rules, and I'll approve you. That's all there is to it. So. And Suzanne has a question about do they set, uh, charge a set fee, monthly fee per square foot. If you're talking about a booth, every mall, craft mall, I say antique mall a lot because that's what I'm used to saying, but all of those places are different, and you literally need to go out and explore and ask those questions most of the time. And it's different in all your areas. I do have a whole video on my YouTube channel, The Turn Leg, that'll help you to give you more information. But most of the time, there is a monthly fee. Usually when you're starting, you have to pay the first month rent in the beginning. Up front. Yeah. Up front. Um, usually, there is also a fee that they will take of your sales, a percentage. So you usually pay a monthly pay, like rent, and it depends on square footage, correct? Um, if you're just doing a display case and it's smaller, you're going to be paying less. If you're, you know, and it all varies. So I'm not even going to say here because across the country prices are different. Yeah, because if I was at um, a craft, um, a, a store that had just crafts. Boutique. Uh, a boutique, that's the thing, yeah. And um, 
some of them, the owners want to put your things where they want to put them. Oh, yeah. And so they will charge you so much, and then it's up to them to put the things where they think they're appropriate. And they might mix them in with other items that they have from other people, like jewelry with jewelry. And then others may give you a couple of shelves or a full bookcase. So that you have to ask the owner what the uh, the costs will be. Yeah, and I think one of the new trends is what my mom is talking about. It's more of a curated shop where they want their vendors, but then they will put it out. And I don't know, you have to think about how you feel about that. If you want your own space, then you want a dedicated booth or you want some sort of a display case that you are responsible for. I personally, I prefer being in charge of my own space because we talked about the style and the vibes. I can make sure that my space is sending out the look and the message I want. By the way, you can see lots of videos of my space if you want to kind of get some more inspiration too. The other thing to keep in mind is that you can also do consignment in some of those stores. So like uh, we have a, a, a store locally where you go in and you show them what you have and they decide which pieces they're interested in and they buy those pieces from you and sell them on their own. So And there, visit them all. The wait lists are very long by us. Mm -hmm. um, the mall where I am at Plaza Antiques, we are telling people who are interested, it is about three year wait. Porcelain artists though, you should keep in mind, people aren't going to find you right away. So when you go to a place like that, they're not going to necessarily advertise for you. So you're going to have to make sure that you have a page that will do the advertising either through your Facebook or you have a website or something of that sort because um, it, if you put your stuff in there, you're not necessarily going to make money right off the bat. And that's where um, be belonging to a group like a booth owners group for beginner, for people who are just starting out and stuff can be very helpful to you because then you can actually um, talk to other people about ways to advertise. And we're not going to go into that here, but I just want to remind you about that. Yeah. You have to make your rent and then make a profit. And it's different than just selling your stuff at a craft show. Yeah. So do your homework. Um, I, you know, talk to all the local areas. I hear from people, you know, there's some in big cities that might have pluses versus out in the suburbs. But one of the things besides going to those places and checking them out is if you can talk to anyone who has a booth there, if you see them working in their space, if they have a Facebook page and they say they're at that store or they have information in their booth and you can contact them, please do that. The best way to find out about getting a space is to talk to people in that space. Find out if they're happy, find out if they like it, find out all the pluses and minuses. They probably will not talk profit with you just because, you know, that's kind of a no-no topic. Some might though, you never know. But ask them some general questions. Because I know when I got into it, I was like, I don't, I was a middle school science teacher. I don't know anything about having a booth. Luckily at the mall I was at, which is a wonderful place, Plaza Antiques in Lincoln Park, um, big shout out. They really helped me. They shared what they knew. So many dealers have worked with me. And so that is the information I'm sharing with you. I was able to retire from my teaching job early because of the success of my booth and do it full time. So um, that's, that just want to give my background. So you're like, who is this person? I want to talk about one of my favorite things in the whole world. Uh, for display and even if you're like well Christina I have like a display case or I'm just gonna have a table I don't understand how this would apply to me it's something called end caps so if you've been to a grocery store I would think you know what an end cap display is it's the stuff that's like facing you before you go down the aisles okay and there are actual those advertisers the merchandisers the Mountain Dew Pepsi whatever is there at the grocery store they pay a premium to get on those end caps because that is what's going to advertise and make sales. So when you have a space, even if it's just a table, you want to have stuff that is like an end cap display. Maybe it's facing out. Maybe it's something my mom talked about with those bifold doors. You could put like slightly in front of your booth. Maybe you can, you know, put it kind of on an angle if you're at a craft show where there's people walking down an aisle. So it's going to be facing right, them. Right. Okay. You really want to think about this. Now in a booth space, what's really nice about an end cap display is you literally will create, and I have 
lots of examples I can show you if you guys need a picture or something please just put it in the comments I'll find one to show you in my booth space which was an 8 by 10 when I first started out I actually brought in like old doors like that door there or I brought in like bifold doors or something or a bookcase, Why? Or a bookcase like this because the front of it is facing out they can see stuff and go oh I want to check that out I have another bookcase or another like pegboard with more items for display. So end cap displays are going to bring the people in. They are going to give you more room for more merchandise, therefore more sales. It's not, especially if you have a booth, but even if you have a table. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it works really well. And now, um, a lot of times at your craft, um, like at our sale that we're in a small room and it's a kind of a horseshoe shape that we set up. I like to be uh, maybe like halfway down if I can or even a little further down so that I attract people down and they've already had a chance to look a little bit that way they're more willing to buy too. So Position is important where you position yourself and sometimes at craft shows. We're talking about display. If you're a booth owner, if you're at craft shows, um, okay, so here, so comparing booths to other others means to sell like craft fairs, which have you found is the best venue? Craft fair, booth, Etsy, etc. I can talk about that. For highest payback to seller, and if someone breaks your stuff, okay. do Just you leave it up there? I'll go little by little. Do the, the rental. So Suzanne, let me answer all of your questions. They're great. Okay, Susan. I'm gonna uh, Susan. I'm sorry. I'm gonna piece it all out. Um, so the big question was like booths, craft fairs, antique mall, wherever. Like if you're in a permanent location or you're just setting up. That is completely up to you. I personally, it is me. And I like a beautiful display and I will take so much time to set up a beautiful display that I do not like to do shows. Personally, for me, I also sell furniture, which is really, a lot of it's heavy it's just me, okay? So for me, I prefer a permanent location, um, but I for have... Porcelain, it's much easier to take it to the shows at the time that people are buying because porcelain's not as popular. If all you have is porcelain, take it to places where you know people are in the mood to buy and sell it there. And for us, the craft, for me, the craft shows work the best, and then... But the best show of all is the one that we do, which is a porcelain artist show in Dearborn. Um, it's the third uh, Saturday of every month from 10 to 3. So it's coming up a week from Saturday at the McFadden Ross House. And if you look on, I've got it posted on all of these pages. But that's, that's the best place because people come expecting to buy china. And that's what they're primed for. Or craft shows, they're, they want small gifts. And so I tend to do better at those than in the booth. Now, I just want to clarify, that's my personal preference about having a booth versus having a show. There are dealers in my mall that are constantly saying, Christina, you got to do the shows with us because we make a fortune. Just like my mom was saying, people come for if you do a vintage market or something. For me, that's what I sell. That's what they're looking. I hear they make a ton. It is personal preference, but if you're doing craft shows, it is a lot of setup, takedown, you need help. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's just what you feel comfortable. So that is personal preference. Hi, Lois. I will also say I have an online store. Um, I highly recommend. If That's you're the serious, best. If you're serious about selling, you should have multiple streams of income. Why? Uh, because when one is not doing well, like my booth, right. there are a lot of times that people are just aren't shopping the antique mall, but they're shopping online. So my online store sales will make up for my booth. They really seem to take turns. There's also so many other great ways that you can earn money if you're using social media, which we talk about in my business group. Now, one of the things that um, I have found is that I have my stuff at the store now, and I'm going to take it to craft show on Saturday. After that, I'm going to break it in half and put half online and half at the at, back at the show at the store because I think I find that more people tend to buy online when it comes to ornaments and things and that works really well. Yeah. And Susan, Suzanne, you had one more question about Susan. someone breaking stuff. <laughs> um oh, well. I, I, no, well, it's going to happen no matter where you put up your stuff. Yeah. Even if it's in your online store, you could break it. It could break in transit. 
It happens. You can have your policies at the store. Uh, most of the time, if something breaks in my booth, they call me and see what, and most of the time, it's like, just whatever. I just count it as a loss. No big deal. It's going to happen. As far as insurance, depending on your booth space and how much you have, you can get your own additional insurance. It depends on what your mall or where you're located has. Mm -hmm. And what they're responsible for, and those are all questions when you're trying to find a space. And some uh, of the uh, larger oh. craft shows will require you, you have insurance. You. Or may require that you have a certain type of tent. Or may require that you have a certain type of table. So you have to take into consideration how much do you want to put out for a, a one-time thing. Are you going to use that again or not? And uh, like ours does not require insurance uh, for our craft different. show. And most of them, uh, like the local churches, they have their own insurance. So that's other, another thing to consider. But in this I area, a lot of people for us now, for things like vintage markets, uh, they require you to have the yep. insurance yep. yourself or you can't be in it. And it is pricey. And that's about the limit of what I know. And I've just heard that from other dealers. So there's lots of questions, and pretty much if you're thinking about doing something, then just get going and get going on it and get started and try some stuff and see what you like. I did, I did kind of like a craft fair setup in my mom's garage just yeah. to see if it would be successful for me before I went into a booth. Um, there's lots of options you can do to try things out. But if you really want to share what you're making and what you're creating with others or what you have, then why not try it? Uh, we have a lot of uh, international people that tune into this and watch this. So this may not apply in your area, and you might want to find experts in your area that can also guide you because um, we're speaking from the U.S., and this is our perspective as to how it works for these types of things. And this is Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. So Which it's regional, and it could be internationally. Each country could have their own, you know, whether you have a show or not or you have a pop-up sale depends a lot on the countries too. So. But I encourage all of you, if you are making beautiful things, so. you should be selling them and sharing them with others because seriously, there are people that want what you have mm -hmm. and you are withholding that from them because they can't get it because you're not selling it. So right. there are ways you can just start with one thing, one way of selling and just see. And I know for me, when I work really hard on something, even if it's an antique that I've fixed up, I love when it finds a good home. And that's what passion, this is my passion to help me move forward to. Okay, grouping. Go ahead. All right, so one more thing I want you to think about with your displays is when you set up your display, I would hope you're not just like unpacking stuff and throwing it on a table and wherever it goes, it goes and you're done or even in a booth. Like quick, let's just, uh, now honestly, in my booth, I've been busy sometimes and every once in a while, I'm just throwing things in place, but I am gonna go back through and make it pretty and I know it seems silly sometimes, but making your displays pretty are just going to help with your sales. Putting that little extra effort in, doing a little research, figuring out what I can do is really going to help you sell. And that's the whole goal, right? So there's a few things with this grouping. One is really easy, and it is grouping by like objects. So if you have like teacups and saucers, yeah, I might want to put them all in one spot. So if someone's coming in looking for a teacup and saucer, they'll know where to look. Picture frames, boxes, uh, not necessarily the plates. I think you can splatter those among the stuff. But um, it jewelry, try to uh, keep your jewelry all in one spot, things like that. That's the way you'd want to group. So, and once again, going back to not just lining things up, we were talking pyramid display because it's going to help them mm -hmm. with their eye. But obviously putting like items together in an antique mall where I am, it, you know, it's hard because a lot of my things are one of a kind. But if I put all my books in one spot, it's going to look a little better. You know, if I have cookbooks all over here, it's going to just be easier. You want it to be easy for the customers to find right. what they're right. looking for so they will buy it. <laughs> from you because if a customer is confused if they don't get what they're if they can't find it if they can't locate it if it's too much stuff on your table and they're worried or they can't see it in the booth and it's too cluttered they're not going to shop so like objects we talked about varying the heights you don't want to just line stuff up on your table that goes back to the pyramid display i have little notes just so i cover everything important for you guys give you guys some of the basics another really easy way to display stuff 
is by color. Whether you sell porcelain, whether you are a crafter, whether you, you can take all of your items and maybe put everything blue in one area. It is so visually pleasing if you've never seen it. And if you have a lot of like one of a kind objects and you're like, I don't know, I only have, she said, put all the mugs together and I only painted one mug or whatever. Well, you got blue stuff, put the blue stuff together, put the red stuff together, put the greens, whatever. If you do color grouping, it is so visually impactful. The other thing I want to say with your display, and this, I know some of you from Paint and Porcelain are like, really, Christina? I don't think so. I promise you, this is so important, and that is telling a story. Okay, just hold on for a second. I know you're not like in an antique booth necessarily. Like for me, for an antique booth, I can bring in these wingback chairs and I can have all these fancy things and it can look like an eclectic home and I can think about the person who might want to live there and he's a world traveler and I'll set the stage. Now, why do I do all of that? Why do I bring in all these things to kind of tell a story? The reason is, is a lot of times there are people that will come into the mall and go, oh, I like everything there. I want it all. So that's what you want, right? You want to sell as much as possible. If you have a tea set and you have plates that kind of go with it and you have, why not put it all together? Tell a story. Now, porcelain artists, you have great stuff. Maybe you need to invest in just a few artificial food things like a fake cupcake or some little cookies that are fake and you don't want to have issues you know and that way you can use them over and over in your display or even in your booth you can mark them not for sales you know if you have this beautiful cake pan or plate i don't know i'm not a porcelain artist so please bear with me but if you have like a display you could stage it wow that'd be great for cupcakes or for hors d'oeuvres or you could put little candies in the candy dinner uh, all of these things are going to tell a story. They're gonna tell your customers how you use them. Like I know my mom has a lot of the tea bag holders and even though they're shaped like a teapot. Nobody knows what nobody they are. Nobody knows at all. Especially the younger people who would buy them for her, their grandma. So, you know, <laughs> put that by the tea set with the plates, with the fake cupcakes, and you put a tea bag on it. Not, or next to it because it. you don't want to hide your Or a box work. of tea, just have the box. Yeah. yeah. You know, you don't even need the tea, you don't have to worry. But if you set this all up to tell a story, it's going to be easier for your customers. And then they're going to go, oh yeah, we need to do a tea. Let's buy it all. Like a real good example is I have a, uh, a soap holder and a toothbrush holder. And when you lay them on the table, they don't look like much. But if you put a, a, a clean toothbrush <laughs> that you just got from the dentist and maybe a nice pretty bar of soap, close by they'll get the hint yeah. thank you guys all so very much and thank you to my well. daughter for all her great ideas and her tips and tricks because um you'll never know where you're going to find something that will actually help you Bye -bye. pick up those brushes and keep painting Bye -bye. <laughs> and i hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about china painting and we can get the word out to more people uh you also can look at the links below uh, my paint and porcelain .com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.